Uh, they asked me to speak about transportation today and the transport of poultry. So, so when you guys think of pult moving on poultry transport, you think of moving them from the poult house to the lay barn, placing chicks, creating, trans creating and transporting birds to depopulate, and on to processing facilities. So all of them. And they are all our areas of, of transport or relocation, part of the relocation processes. So transport itself is actually the most visible part of our industry and in poultry production. It is of all livestock production. The vast majority of the public never go on farm, but they will all, at one point in time, pass a vehicle transporting animals. So we're out there, even on Highway 2, between liners, cattle liners, hog trailers, and I passed some southbound poultry trucks this morning also coming out. Uh, Q8, QE2 here is a major thoroughfare, but a lot of people, that will be their only exposure to um, poultry production, so coming off farm, farm. It's also one of the most vulnerable areas. Uh, transport is very challenging, especially with poultry from the welfare side. Um, and it's vulnerable because of its public exposure. So we have a little more control over the farms, but once you leave the farm and you're out on the highway, it's a little different. So who are the stakeholders in transport? So who's all involved in the transport? A lot of people usually think the driver. When you say transport, they think driver. Um, but that's not correct. Um, the farmer themselves are, the catchers, the transporter, and the receiver. They're all part of the transport chain. Now, even in our regulations, the Health of Animals Act, Part 12, um, regulates transport here in Canada. And when those regulations were originally written, uh, they used to say whoever loaded an animal. But they went and amended that part of the regulations to say whoever loaded or caused to be loaded. And that change, that slight change in our regulations brought in all stakeholders to transport, not just the drivers, because everybody is involved. What are the primary risk areas uh, during transport? Fitness to transport is probably our biggest one. Making sure that the birds that are put on the trailer are actually fit to go for the ride. Catching and handling and environmental challenges. Um, Canada is probably one of the most environmentally challenging areas to transport animals. Uh, we have extreme cold and we can have extreme heat. And I'm gonna talk about each one of these a little more, so we'll get into more detail. So our most common bird relocations, so transport, day-old chicks and poults. I always say the day-old chicks go by plane, train, and automobile. Um, they, they are about every method you can uh, move them. It's amazing. I don't think a lot of people realize how many chicks are flowing all over the world on a daily basis. It's huge, 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 huge. Uh, Intra-farm, so that's between barns, and then on to harvest. So, so what is the role of each stakeholder? So what's everybody's role in transport? Farmer. Farmer has a big role, and this is all for pre-transport. Oversee the bird care on farm. So taking up care of the birds up until the time they're transported. Farmer needs to coordinate with the catcher, the transporter, and the processors to help ensure animal care is maintained during transport. So that's everybody's got a role in that. Fitness of birds. You need to make sure your birds are ready to be caught and loaded. Prepare the facilities for the ease of catching and loading. Prior to catching, walking the barn with the catching supervisor for a final check. And monitoring the catching and the loading. What is the catcher's role? They're responsible for bird welfare on the farm during preloading, catching, and loading. Follow the loading densities by drawer or container or calculated by the transporter or, trans or processor prior to the start of each catch. So know how many you're going to load before doing so. Starting, identify and do not load birds that are unfit for transport. So the catcher's right in there, so we don't want to be putting any animals on the trailers that shouldn't be. And communicate and document document any deviations for no, normal operating procedures. The role of the transporter. Bird welfare during loading and transportation. Monitor and follow the loading densities by drawer or container. Communicate and docu document any deviations for normal operating procedures. Before leaving, make sure you check for loose birds. 
Where applicable, monitor the conditions of the birds and adjust ventilation and their top tarps if possible and where appropriate. So you can have, especially here, we can have extreme climate changes, even between Edmonton and Calgary <laughs> in the winter. Edmonton, you load up in Edmonton, it can be minus 40 and you hit Calgary, it's plus 10, all in the same day. Ensure that the truck and trailer are appropriate for the birds loaded and weather conditions that may be encountered. And the receiver is also responsible. So this would be either the farm receiving or the processor. Uh, they're responsible for bird welfare during unloading. So that needs to be watched. Preparations for a receipt of the birds. Make sure whatever they're going into, they're ready for them. Prompt euthanasia of compromised birds. And documentation and communication of any issues they saw upon receipt. Now, management, I always say this in any animal welfare, and for those of you who've had any other lectures from me on handling or euthanasia or anything, um, this is a big thing of mine. Management sets the tone. Um, the attitude within the barn, especially towards animal welfare, is set by management. They lead by example. So they're responsible for that, making sure animal welfare is at a top priority, including during transport. So you need to make sure all employees are qualified and provided appropriate training to what they're doing. Um, they must be aware of all regulations, laws, and quality assurance programs and expectations. We actually have some strict regulations during transport and a, and a lot of people aren't aware of that. So there are guidelines that need to be followed on that also. And you need to make sure that your, um, your employees know that and the transporters. So. Um, and our welfare standards also are part of that during transport. Now, laws and regs, an exciting part of this, but it is part of it. So with our laws and regs, part 12 of transport, you cannot out overcrowd animals during transport. So this is, of course, they're outlined in a little more detail, but I just pulled the gist of it out. So you can't overcrowd animals during transport. You cannot transport animals that are unfit to travel. And this is probably one of our biggest areas right now. You cannot load, transport, or unload animals in a way that would cause injury or undue suffering. A big area where I see an issue with this is usually at um, loading. Requirements for provision of food, water, and rest at specific intervals is covered within our regs. Protections from adverse weather and adequate ventilation and use of proper containers and transport um, vehicles and segregation of animals. So this is all things that are covered within our regulations and poultry are specifically identified in there. <laughs> 